I hate working with volume. For a start, it's temperature dependent. So you, when you report it, you need to know what temperature you're working with. So at 20 degrees, 100 milliliters, and at 50 degrees, 100 milliliters contain different amounts of whatever substance we're reporting on. Secondly, it's not a conserved quantity. The easiest example to think of is the one we're dealing with today, alcohol. If I take 50 milliliters of ethanol and I mix it with 50 milliliters of water, the resultant volume is not 100 milliliters of mixture. Don't believe me? Check this out. It's much better, in my opinion, to work with a reasonable quantity like mass or moles. Nevertheless, we can't get away from working with volume, and whenever you go buy a bottle of booze, the amount of ethanol in that booze is reported as a volume. But if I buy, say, a tin of beer that's got 5% alcohol by volume, that doesn't mean that there's 5 milliliters of alcohol to every 95 milliliters of water, because once again, the volume changes. Today we're looking at how do you take the alcohol by volume, the way booze reports its ethanol content, and convert it into what we would understand as a, an actual volume fraction, or even better, a mass or a mole fraction. When we mix alcohol and water, the volume is not conserved. If I take 40 milliliters of alcohol and add 60 milliliters of water at 20 degrees Celsius, the resultant volume of the mixture is just under 97 milliliters. In this example, we would say that the volume fraction of alcohol is 40% because volume fraction is the volume of a component divided by the sum of the pure component volumes before we mix them but the mixture would be greater than 41% alcohol by volume. And that's because alcohol by volume is known as a volume concentration, not a volume fraction. A volume concentration takes the volume of a component and divides it by the mixture volume, so after mixing. So for this mixture, the alcohol by volume is the volume of ethanol over the volume of the mixture. A 40% alcohol by volume mixture takes 40 milliliters of alcohol and adds water until the volume of the mixture is 100 milliliters. In this case, we would need 63 milliliters of water. If you did not know this, the error you would obtain is a couple of percent. So the key to working out the alcohol by volume is knowing what the volume of the solution is after you have mixed the components. The degree to which the mixture volume deviates from the sum of the pure component volumes in chemical thermodynamics is known as an excess property. And the amount of the deviation is not constant either. It's a function of the relative amounts of the individual components. These excess properties need to be quantified by doing lab work. For the ethanol water system, you can find the data on Wikipedia where someone has uploaded data from the Dortmund data bank. The excess volume of pure water and pure ethanol are both zero because the volume only starts to deviate when we start mixing the pure components. The deviation is reported as negative because the mixture volume is less than the sum of the individual components. The biggest deviation is around 40 mole percent. But if you're sitting brewing your own beer and aren't used to doing these calculations and you need to try and figure it out, it may not be readily apparent what you do with this curve. So we're going to develop the sheet from which we can draw not only the curve on Wikipedia, which if you haven't noticed is for 25 degrees, but we can also get all conversions between alcohol by volume, volume fraction, mass fraction and mole fraction. And if you're feeling lazy and don't care how to develop the sheet yourself, you can find a link to the sheet I create in the video description. A quick note before we start. 
Alcohol by volume is usually reported at 20 degrees Celsius. So the curves on excess molar volume from Wiki and the Dortmund data bank would not actually be the correct ones to use. So we will be using data only for 20 degrees. We start by going to the ethanol data page on Wiki. This gives me the density of water ethanol solutions as a function of mass percent ethanol. The density here is reported relative to 4 degree water, but that's close enough to one that I'm not bothered. I'm just going to use the data as is. We copy those across to our sheet. We pretend that we have 100 grams of solution. This is the basis of our calculation. That means the mass of ethanol is equal to the mass percentage ethanol from the Wikipedia page, and the mass of water is simply 100 minus the mass of ethanol. We then convert these masses to moles, but to do that we need the molar mass of water and ethanol. The moles of each component equals the mass of the component divided by the molar mass of the component. We can then work out the mole fraction of ethanol by dividing the moles of ethanol by the sum of moles of both components. Now we're going to work out the pure component volumes and pretend we have not mixed them yet. So I divide the mass of ethanol by the density of 100% ethanol all the way down here. And I divide the mass of water by the density of 0% ethanol, aka pure water, up here. I can then get the sum of the pure component volumes, again, this is before mixing, and work out a volume fraction ethanol by dividing the volume of pure ethanol by the sum of the pure component volumes. Now let's work out the mixture volume. The actual volume of the mixture is simply 100 grams, that's our basis, divided by the solution density from Wiki. Now we can work out the alcohol by volume by dividing the volume of ethanol by the mixture volume. You can plot whatever it is you like now. For example, here is a nice curve describing the relationship between the mass fraction ethanol and the alcohol by volume. We're going to go a step further and generate the excess molar volume curves that we found on Wikipedia. The excess volume is simply the volume of the mixture minus the sum of the pure component volumes. If we want the molar basis, we divide this excess volume by the total number of moles we calculated earlier. We can now plot this data as a function of mole fraction and we can get a curve that is similar to the one that appears on Wiki and the Dortmund data bank. Once again, there is a difference because this data is for 25 degrees instead of 20 like in our calculation. But there is nothing stopping you from pasting in the solution densities for any other temperature. Now the thing I don't get is that I have done this exercise for different temperatures and the curves for higher temperatures should lie above the ones for lower temperatures. And this image, despite me scaling it properly, has the higher temperature lying below. The actual page for the Dortmund data bank contains data sets at various pressures and I'm not going to try and figure out who did what. If you know what it is, let me know. But I will show you something else that I think is interesting. For some reason, there's a little bump on the excess molar volume at a mole fraction of 0.72, or a mass percent of 87%. This led me to believe that there is something wrong with the density data on Wikipedia. So I went and looked up the density in the Bible of Chemical Engineering, Perry's Chemical Engineer's Handbook. Here is the PERI data from 85 to 89 weight percent ethanol at a temperature of 20 degrees. And have a look here. All the data points match except where I had the bump at 87%. If I correct the density from 0.82554 to 82583, then all of a sudden this curve looks like it makes more sense. So it looks like there was a typo on Wiki. But this isn't where the mental masturbation stops. I did this exact exercise for all the data in Perry's for all temperatures between 10 and 40 degrees and this seems like an excellent technique for spotting typos. If I look at the densities for 50 weight percent at 10 degrees, 61 percent for 25 degrees and 68 percent for 40 degrees, something seems up. I tried to doctor the numbers from Perry's as follows. I swapped the last two digits of the first two suspects 
and change the third decimal of the last suspect. And would you look at that, the curves look much better. So if someone at McGraw Hill Publishers could go and see whether these are actual typos, that'd be great. Meanwhile, Perry's is quite a fat book, so I better get cracking if I want to find all the stuff ups.